Greetings everyone, DFG here. Hey guys, uh, I have a quick little message I want to share and uh, it's a pretty uh, sensitive subject that I want to bring up. But I, I want to bring it up because it's on my mind and if it's on my mind, maybe it's on, you know, someone else's mind. Maybe it is not. Um, but for the, that's just for the sake that it could be, here's w w what I, I want to share. Um, First of all, as it relates to, you know, my friends, people that I love, people that I care about, people that I like a whole lot. You know, uh, if you know me, uh, you know that, you know, that could be people from all over the country and in many instances, people from all over the world. Uh, but in particular, you know, in terms of uh, my friends who are Caucasian or my friends who are white, you know, you guys are really my friends. I mean, I don't, I don't have any fake friends. I'm uh, not the kind of person that will, you know, tell you, you know, to your face that you're my brother, or call you my brother, and then when I walk away from you, you know, whisper over to someone else of a different ethnic group and say something negative or something evil or despising or disrespectful. I'm not that person. You know, I'm just not. So to know me is to know who I am and to know that, you know, um, I'm not a I'm not disingenuous um, especially when it comes down to the matters you know what I'm saying of, 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 of the human spirit you know um, I believe God created every person there's no question in my mind about that you know I believe that inside of God's creation you know he's given us what I call intellectual wisdom for us to be able to understand things that we don't understand and also to seek out that knowledge to make sure that those things that we don't understand, that we began to understand, that we overstand them. And, and what I mean by overstanding is that you have, you know, intellectual wisdom, you know, enough to be able to validate, validate it, verify it, and then take a position, you know, on it. So to get to my point is that this message is to, you know, I would have to call them so-called friends who happen to be white. Uh, and 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 I'm talking to that particular group, not to my friends. So Todd Nelson and Jennifer Gloriax and the Paula Brackets, Donna Marks, you know, and I could go on and on and on. Scott Phillips, people that I love, people I, that that, I'm, that are friends with, and I'm friends with you guys for life. This is not your message. This is the message to the other guys, and they know who they are. But here's 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 why I decided to share this message with those other guys, and I hope you hear me clearly. If a person of color, such as myself, bring about a particular truth around issues that are concerning, you know, people in general, but specifically people of color, that does not make me, you know, anti you. That does not make me a black supremacist. That does not make me um, a black nationalist. That does not make me a person who hate, you know, whites because I'm talking about issues that are current and that have a systemic throughout you know our country's history our country's history just because i bring up issues that relate to black and uh injustices that exist unless you're guilty of those injustices yourself why are you taking offense and more importantly why would you label me you know as a black supremacist if i'm speaking about obvious truth that you can go Turn on any television today and you can see some of these atrocities that are happening out here, you know, in these streets. And all of us know about, you know, things that are going on in the inner cities and have been going on in the inner cities for a long time. I'll give you a, uh, an example. The situation with uh, crack cocaine usage in inner cities. And in particular, not exclusively, because there are more crack addicts who are non-black than they are that are black. But black represent black the black population represents such a small percentage of America that any type of epidemic that happens in that community puts that community at, at, at grave injury and put that put that I'm sorry put that community at grave rest grave risk <laughs> I'm sorry and puts them you know um, uh, that that particular community you know uh, in a very precautious situation because they're a lot less. You know of that particular ethnic group and i'll give you an example for example black men you know i don't know if you know the percentages but america percentage of black men is about four percent four percent black men so four percent of black men you know although you know they they have sometimes shown themselves to to, to con sometimes they've conducted themselves in manners that 
makes all of us a little bit concerned and intimidated, maybe even a little like, okay, you know, let me be careful. Uh, but holistically, as a nation of people, 4% of that, of, 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 of any community is not a risk to the, to the majority community. They, they, they're just not, they don't have the numbers. So being fearful of a person just because they're black is kind of like being afraid of the boogeyman or, think, or believing in Santa Claus. They just don't exist, either of the two. If you're looking for Santa Claus, look for your mother, your father, or someone who cares about you for the holiday season. And if you're looking for, you know, uh, for the boogeyman, you know what I'm saying, um, that's probably you. Just like Santa is me and you, the boogeyman is me and you. We all can be boogeymen. But there is no boogeyman, boogeyman. So there's no need to be fearful in that sense because even if they, if they were genuinely angry, they're not a threat. And I can assure you that every black man in America is not angry, you know, and surely they're not angry at, you know, our white brothers and sisters. You follow me? Because America is great because of all of us. But to deny some of us of their past and their contribution to America, you know, it's, it's disingenuous, it's wrong, and it's hurtful. You know, blacks did have a part of building, you know, the economic system in America. Not by choice, but they did have a, they did play a big role in that. They made Cotton King, you know, during the slavery period for 350 years and, and you know, et cetera. You know, uh, the Southern community, because they had low wages, because they had, you know, more or less, they didn't have free labor, but they had slave labor, so they didn't have to pay the same wage, you know, for someone who wasn't enslaved caused them to be able to be very profitable with, 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 their, with their cotton crops and other crops, tobacco, sugar cane, and it became the fifth, fifth largest um, economic community in the world, economy. It became the fifth largest economy in the world, the South, not the North, the South, up until the, you know, to the uh, end of the slavery period, and I will tell you, even for the beyond. So when we talk about, you know, con contributions to the infrastructure of America and where America got its wealth from, it's a compilation and you should not get offended because someone black, you know, has taken some time and did some research for no other reason because, you know, just like a white person would want to feel proud about George Washington and your forefathers, you know, we want to feel proud about ours too. And I don't think you hate me because you say George Washington, you know, was the founder of this country. So, you know, uh, I wouldn't hate you for that. I'm sure you know I wouldn't hate you for that. So don't hate me if I talk about, you know, black liberators, you know, people who have done things of black people who contributed, you know, uh, you know, to the to the well-being and the strength of this country and this country's economy. And getting upset with me because I'm talking about, you know, matters that happen to pertain about race would be getting by getting mad with your I don't know, your general manager. If you went to the general manager and you complained about something, the general manager looked at you and just, you know, more or less dismissed you and said, you know what, okay, yeah, you know, I'll take care of it. And then when you walk away, they do nothing about it. You follow me? You know, you would you would be offended. You know, you'd be offended if, if that general manager did not want to hear your feelings about something, did not want to discuss. Quite frankly, you wouldn't even see, consider that person as your leader. I think you would almost have a certain negative feeling towards that person for the sole reason that they did not respect how you felt. So if you're my friend, and many of my white brothers and sister friends, I love you and I know you guys stand with me through anything and all things, you know, uh, but those of you who are so-called friends, you follow me, I'm going to share with you right now, I'm very disappointed in you and I, I hate the fact, you know, and, and it, it's disappointing that you would put me in some little small box and say and, and label me as a as a black nationalist or a black supremacist or any other silly foolishness. No more than I would want to. If you are my employee, I would want to call you a bad employee just because you had a grievance a grievance with something, whether it was inside of the company or another person. You would want me to see you whole. You would want me to respect your emotions, your feelings. And quite frankly, you would want to be validated. And if there's anything I could do about it, you would really want me to contribute, you know, to the to rectifying that situation. But we can't rectify it if you don't tell me what the problem is. You follow me? And you would know that. And I would tell you that if you were my employee and you had a problem with something and you didn't bring it to my attention, but you were complaining about it to others, I would come to you and say, well, why haven't you told me about this? Well, I didn't think you guys would do anything about it. I said, well, that presumption is wrong because you don't, you know, you don't know what I would or would not do until you bring it to my attention. The key is bringing it 
forward, bring it to my attention. When we talk concerned people, concerned citizens who happen to be of people of color, African Americans, black Americans, however you want to describe us, when we bring these things up to the forefront, it's not because we detest who you are, it's not because we hate who you are. What we're saying to you is that there, we have a problem and, and we're coming to you because we believe that with partnership, with your support, you know, that we together can take steps to rectify the problem. So if you see me post something or you see me do a video and I bring it from the dark and bring it into the light, it's not to, to diss you or disrespect you or to imply that I don't love you. Are you serious? Really? You know, that is small-minded, narrow-minded. It's the thinking of bigots, black bigots, white bigots, Asian bigots, you know, Hispanic bigots. That's how they think. They, they, they see the world to tunnel vision. They only see it from one perspective and they don't ever want to consider the next guy. You follow me? So what I'm saying to you is that your behavior is disappointing to me because if you felt that uh, I had a grievance or if you felt that I was wrong, then if you are my friend, you don't shy away or pull away from me. What you do is that you engage me. You ask for information, you ask for knowledge, you ask for insights. And if I'm wrong, guess what else? You give me some information so that my intellect, my you know, intelligence is increased and I have a better perspective about it. And so I will say this and, and coming to the end of it, you know, and, I, and, I, I'll, and, and I'll give you another small example. And I think I started on this and I stopped. So I, also, the only reason I'm going to go back to it. When you look at the... Um, epidemic that's going on with heroin and the uh, opioids and how it's destroying, you know, the youth of America, the young people of America. You know, it is the right thing for America as a, as a caring country to go and come up with processes and programs to help those who are struggling in those areas. You follow me? Who are struggling with that addiction. But don't be angry at me if I say, well, you know, I know something like this happened at the same scale in the black community crack cocaine back in the 80s and the 90s that destroyed families, that ripped families apart. People in my own family who have been struggling with that addiction now for almost two decades and nobody cared, guys. At least from a holistic, from a national standpoint, nobody cared. They just laid them at thugs, gang members, you know, hoodlums, you know, blacks killing blacks, etc., etc., etc. So if I call that out, I'm not calling it out because I'm angry at you. I'm calling it out because I'm saying, look, it's obvious to us. We see this. This is not hidden from our attention. And if we're going to build a greater nation, you can't, you know, do it in spite of us and expect us to be, you know, good with it. You know what I'm saying? We want the nation to be whole, those of us who care. But we also want to be cared about as well. Okay? We want to be, we want to be respected as human beings and seen on equal footing. Not a handout. You follow me? Not being, not privileged but fair and square. Days work for a day's dollar. All right? But if I'm a citizen and you're a citizen, if you want to come and you say, okay, I'm Irish and I don't like the way they're treating Irish people, you had better say something about it and you better say it to everybody so everybody can hear. Cry out, cry loud. You know what I'm saying? But don't hate someone of color. And please, you know what I'm saying, understand that I'm not coming at you, I'm just coming to you. You know what I'm saying? Because I have a right to speak out, and if you're my friend, you're okay with that right. Thanks for listening. DFG, now you know. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.